Welcome back. It's nice to see you again. I am a little surprised today that we're gonna be talking about the iPhone 14 Pro camera. In fact, I didn't even plan on making a video when I first got this thing. And there's some issues that nobody else is talking about. And so today, we're going to address the good, the bad, and the ugly for the iPhone 14 Pro camera. Let's talk about this. Apple touted a lot of improvements to the camera in iPhone 14 Pro. Got that 48 megapixel camera in raw mode, action mode, which is a new GoPro competitor mode. You've got better low light performance, whatever 40% better low light performance actually means in practice. And I thought there's only one way to test this that's really gonna put this camera through the paces. We're climbing 16 miles up a mountain into the wilderness at midnight so that we can test every camera mode in every light condition and I can show you concrete examples of how they perform at each stage. First things first, we've got portrait mode. This is a classic, everybody loves portrait mode. Now, in iPhone 14 Pro, not a lot has changed here. If you look along my chest, if you look along my backpack, there's still some misses in portrait mode. That happens. The great thing is, these are photos. You can fix them in post, and so I still recommend that everybody's taking portrait mode photos. If you're going to print them, go through, double check them, clean up the edges after the fact. If you want a tutorial about that, let me know in the comments below. Getting Pixelmator Pro is a really inexpensive way to start editing your photos, especially little cleanup jobs like this. The good about this photo is that if you look at the color range, you look at the color separation, it's not a lot of noise, it's really solid photo all the way around, which is exactly what I'd expect. This was taken probably about 35, 40 minutes after sunrise, so there should be prime lighting conditions to get an absolutely beautiful photo out of this camera. Let's look at another example where you would expect the iPhone 14 Pro to really shine. This photo is taken right at sunrise as well. This is taken from the top of the summit looking down at the lake below. The first photo is the 12 megapixel RAW shot with the 3x zoom. And you can see we can crop in quite a bit and we still have a lot of clarity in the image, lots of good color separation. Really not too much noise. I'm very impressed with how this performed. Now, let's compare that to the brand new 48 megapixel shooting mode introduced in iPhone 14 Pro. This mode is only available with the wide lens, so you can see this is the same angle. The shack is just a little farther down in the scene. And you can see we can zoom and things look great. This is more or less comparable, but we can zoom more and it just keeps holding up. I was completely blown away by the quality of these 48 megapixel shots, especially in good lighting conditions. You just have so much to work with in post. It's amazing. So that's existing shooting modes. That's the new Pro Raw format. But what about low light? That was the 40% improvement. How much has that changed? Going back to another portrait mode photo, this was taken with the wide lens yet again. You can see just before sunrise, 20, 30 minutes, there's enough light that you're actually still getting good color separation. Things don't get too muddy maybe a little bit noisy in the darks, but overall, a very usable photo. Unfortunately, if you roll back time just 20 minutes earlier, and the amount of light that that represents as the sun's coming up, things turn from good into the bad and maybe even touching on the ugly. At this stage, every single shot was just way too dark to even be usable, so we started doing long exposures, and you can see that close to the camera, things that are holding perfectly still come out pretty good but any amount of distance from the camera and it falls apart really quickly. I could give a pass to my face. You can see there's some fringing. As still as I was holding, maybe I moved a little bit and that got captured in the long exposure. But if you start looking at the mountain, it was holding perfectly still and it had light starting to peek into it as the sun was coming up over the horizon. This was a slightly higher point than what we were at. In my opinion, it should have been able to do a much better job than what it did, but it's a complete mess. There's no color separation, there's no detail. It's really an unusable photo. And if you want another example of the same thing taken to the extreme, let's take a look at another photo that was taken just an hour earlier. This was a very dark lighting situation. In this case, it's a three second night mode exposure. We had a little bit of light coming in from around us. There were other people with headlamps and things like that. So it wasn't pitch black. And as a person, you could naturally see just fine without any additional light. If you take a closer look at these photos, it's practically a watercolor painting. It struggled to get a useful night mode photo basically all night long. And that's fine. Uh, is... That is a typhoon of a thunderstorm if I've ever seen one. There goes the pergola. The roof just fell down. That is really loud. Okay, let's wrap this up. So night mode, 
okay. Not great. I wasn't impressed and I didn't feel like it warranted a 40% improvement year over year. Now here's where things definitely go from bad to ugly. I noticed this in a variety of situations, but all of them had the same thing in common. There was a bright light in the scene, usually backlighting the subject. And what happens is you sort of get this misty haze of a look that was not there when you're taking the photo, but shows up in post-processing. If you go follow Halide Camera on Twitter, you can see that their analysis shows it's part of the HDR processing pipeline that causes it to be blown out and it overcorrects for subjects that are backlit. This is something that I really hope is just a software fix and Apple can update it later because it makes a lot of photos really unusable. The other ugly thing is cinematic mode. I'm not talking about how it still has problems with focus hunting. That's been a thing, we know it's a thing. In fact, it's good enough that if you're doing these type of talking headshots for YouTube and you're on a budget, I think it can work just fine for your use case. But there's a problem. Working with cinematic mode files is a pain. And this is what makes working with the iPhone 14 Pro in post the ugly part of the situation. So right now there's obviously a bug. Cinematic mode videos don't work in Final Cut Pro or iMovie. It's just a bug. There's nothing anybody can do. There's lots of forum posts on Reddit and I can link them below where people are trying to discuss workarounds and there's not any. The other problem with cinematic mode videos is that they're actually shot in three videos. If you notice, when you hook up your iPhone to your computer, multiple files show up. You have the image, you have an image with an E designation, which is the one that has the effect baked in, and then you have an extra file that is the depth map that is kept separately. You have to manage all of these together. And so right now, the only way to actually get cinematic mode videos into Final Cut Pro or iMovie is to actually go through a bunch of steps when you're airdropping it over to your computer, or if you're pulling it over using image capture, being very intentional about how you wrap things up and send them over to Final Cut. Again, I can link to support articles below, but it's a pain. I really wish Apple would clean this workflow up because it is not intuitive and it's very easy to screw up. The other thing is ProRes files are massive and lightning is slow. And that doesn't mean that you can just use AirDrop to make up for this shortcoming. AirDrop is slower. In fact, for big enough ProRes files, you literally can't AirDrop them. They're just too big. And so in our actual test case, over the course of one evening of shooting, we had a mix of ProRes, cinematic mode, normal, we had RAWs, we had regular stills. It took over an hour to import and process everything. And yes, you heard right, processing, because you actually can't use cinematic mode videos until they've been processed, which if you're not on a time crunch, that's fine. But if you are, it just adds to the slowness of the process and it really sets you back if you're trying to move quickly in your workflow. So to answer your final question, is the iPhone 14 Pro worth it? I mean, yeah, yes, it's a great camera, it really is. But if you have these specific workflows, you're going to be using ProRes, you're gonna be using cinematic mode, there's drawbacks and they're things that need to be cleaned up by Apple and they can influence your purchasing choice. If you found this helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. I'll catch you on the next one. I'm gonna go try and fix my house. It sounds like the rain has stopped.